Hi everyone, welcome to Open Class number 125 with Coach Alina. Hi, hi everyone. Hi Daniel. How are you today? Perfect. Hope you're well too. I am good. I'm very good. Uh, thanks so much. And so yeah, this Open Class, as always, nothing medical advice, just me and Coach Alina just sharing some general thoughts and comments. But before we jump into that, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about you know how things are going in your end um you have have you have you taken like the final exam like now from the school or? I, I am uh going to finish that because it's been like quite busy uh you know the whole schedule because i am now since i started also coaching on that time and with everything so it's kind of quite intensive but i am uh planning it to do it like as soon as possible so yeah hopefully <laughs> <laughs> but Absolutely. I think so much by you know like uh, um, practicing coaching on the app and it's been like really great and cool. and people mostly like when they come to bedtime I could see that they already know so much and it's really really uh, we usually have like really great conversations because they are always asking already like more um, kind of thought through questions and sometimes the questions are more like um, you know like like interesting or challenging and then we are just you know like discovering like all together we like learning both me and and uh and the client so that's that's been going really well super nice and i actually wanted to maybe even speak a little bit more about that but for someone who's kind of jumping in like what's what's coach Alina talking about well first of all like uh you know she's uh really close to graduating but you know so you don't have the certificate yet but you're already coached for sure <laughs> Um, so graduating the sleep coach school, you know, um, certification program. And I've recruited, as I shared on the channel to recruited uh, a coach Alina to work with, uh, with in bedtime. And, um, and I'm just really glad it's been going well. And like, I actually, I'm curious, uh, do you, do you still work for, um, I know you actually work, did some work with some friends of mine with another app are you still working with them as well or or, or not yeah, so yeah, yeah. we're still like yeah working on a regular basis and it's really also was a really great experience and uh yeah very very cool it does really well yeah exactly um so yeah i actually just want to share something very briefly and then also talk about like some other work you do uh, which is um as as you know uh ali um one of our clients in bedtime uh, noticed some spelling errors. Sorry about those, by the way, it's my bad, like my, my, my bad spelling. But then you, you, I asked like, okay, that's great. We can correct these spelling mistakes. And you sent like a screenshot of, you know, uh, of that. And it was so nice for me to read because uh, there was like the client was saying like, this is spelled wrong. And then, and by the way, I'm, I'm making progress and I'm feeling so hopeful. And I just saw that and it's so nice for me because, you know, it's like this kind of final kind of for me it's almost like the final proof of concept where i see that i don't need to be there it's not about me it's about the you know the teaching like coach alina can do a great job and and i can foresee that this can you know this is kind of like uh you know this can go go really far in terms of reaching people so i was really glad to read that um just wanted to, to let you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. and uh uh, so with that said, yeah. Also, uh, you 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 you're taking on some clients privately as well. Yeah, uh, I have uh, uh, my Instagram, which I try to post like regularly. I also like um, the um, YouTube channel, and then I get some requests for for private coaching also there. So yeah, it's been also. Uh, like also great experience and uh, uh, some of them also know you so they're coming also like for, like they found me through watching your channel so that was also really 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 nice uh, push initial push so people uh, more people discovered me and uh, I try to post like regularly and uh, share my kind of like latest like ideas and thoughts uh, trying to kind of like simplify the knowledge and put it make it more accessible and uh, uh and basically what what i believe is is that normally it's it's you, you can easily uh learn and and help yourself by just simply reading things that are available there so i'm trying to pro provide that uh but i know sometimes like when you're dealing with uh you know our uh, mind which is like super you know um 
sometimes can be chaotic and 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 you know trying to keep us safe and so on so it sometimes gets tricky and some and people very often feel like they're stuck and this is when i thought that um providing this kind of one-on-one -on -one sessions when we can look at particular situation that they are having you know and then just try to get them kind of unstuck and just like like go further in their learning because i think in the end everything what you learn is uh like it's basically thanks to your own like work that you put into learning and being there experience willing to experience um like whatever insomnia brings yeah so it's 100%. like most of the time it's like all all, is, all job is done by by the client and then there's sometimes they just need like sl slightly fresh like outlook on on their problem so they can know they, they know where they're struggling and then it just goes easier yeah, absolutely. Oh, sorry, Alina. I just realized uh, my 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 computer wasn't connected to the power. So. Oh my gosh, I was in hey, drama here. I was in hey, drama hey. here. But yeah, that I'm connected now, so it's all good. <laughs> okay. And, and now, um, how do you do that? By the way, is it like Zoom? Do you do like Zoom Zoom sessions? Or? Um, it's up. Yeah, I mean, I'm very flexible, but sometimes since they, uh, you know, write on uh, on Instagram, then. In, on Instagram, you can also have video chat, so we usually do that. Yeah, makes but sense. Very, very flexible. Very cool. And I'll link, of course, to you know your Instagram and YouTube channel in the description. So, uh, with that said, yeah, uh, let's let's jump in here and look at some questions from the community. I'm going to share my screen and read the first one, which is uh, from. Let's see, open class here. This is from. Uh, I will say Richa. Weecha from, from India. Mm -hmm. Let's read this. Hi, Coach Daniel. First of all, please keep doing your good work. Uh, your classes give a lot of insight. Thanks for the support. I will. Pardon my English. Always got passing marks in that. <laughs> I have a few doubts. Number one, like you told that we need to listen to our minds so that it won't bombard us with new thoughts. Fair enough. But my mind keeps saying, hey, you're not sleeping. You need to sleep. Your health will, da will get damaged. So being awake or wakefulness won't be in contradiction to what our mind is saying, question mark. Do you think the mind will backfire if we don't listen? Number two, uh, even if we make wakefulness our friend, which I don't know how since reading a book at 2 a.m. just makes me more nervous uh, because we're not used to it. Earlier, I used to sleep well. So do you mean wakefulness will ultimately lead to sleep as a final outcome? Number three, I meet so many people daily and I don't even know a single person suffering from this. Does that mean we are mentally sick? Why is this thought coming to my mind? Do we have a destructive mind who thinks that while 90% don't even think about it? For in one of your lectures, you told we need to delegate sleep, but earlier we never used to think about delegation. We were so confident that we never thought about it. Uh, don't you think this is responsibility of our mind and that the body can take care of sleep? Then why is our brain confused with the error, uh, this error in a safety signal? Number five, you said, don't look for the outcome. Enjoy wakefulness and sleep will happen. Does this really happen? And do you have clients who ultimately were healed? Thanks so much. Sorry, I asked so much. Feel free to reply whenever you time. Namaste from India. All right. Uh, thanks so much, Richard, for for sending this. And we can just go one by one here. And so the first question is like, you said we need to listen to our mind so it won't bombard us with new thoughts. But then Farisha says, but my mind keeps saying like, hey, you're not sleeping, you need to sleep, etc." cetera. Um, and so, yeah, we're gonna start with that one. When, when you hear this one, uh, uh, Alina, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Um, I mean, that was like really, uh, like, you know, uh, Richard like touched a lot of interesting points. And, Who's here, by the way? Brenda, hi. <laughs> oh, hi, Brenda. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, and uh, basically, uh, well, it all comes down to that, that our brain is all about safety. And, and the thing is about, about our brain is that it, it likes to keep things under control. And that's what it always does. So whenever we uh, meet some uncertain situation where we don't know, like where we don't feel like we are in control, we are automatically, we don't feel safe. So our brain tries to gain that back that control and bring us to safety. 
And the way it does it by sending us the signals and those signals are what we usually call hyper arousal. So basically it's any sort of like emotions that are meant to catch our attention so that we will attend to that issue and try to solve it. So in, in a way that our brain is tries to make us act so that we go into safe place. And it does it in many ways. It can be some physical sensations, you know, like uh, fast heartbeat or, or um, like sweating or any, any sort of other, you know, physical sensations. It could be emotions, uh, anger, frustration, um, fear, and it can be also thoughts. So all those kind of like thoughts that like usually people refer like sleep thoughts and uh, like, what if I don't sleep? What if this caused the, you know, this issue and so on. And they're all a part of that system, like just the way how brain is tries to keep us safe. And since it's in a way a signal that it, it, it means that whenever, like uh, whenever we try to kind of like avoid that signal, and not to you know listen to it then our brain thinks that we are not you know like we are in even in more more danger and that's why it starts sending us even more signals of those so this is why uh refusing to listen to our thoughts is never helpful because um because it just will end up with more of those so you know if you don't want to feel anxiety you will, you will have more anxiety if you don't want to think that thought you will this thought will be more persistent that's how it works but the moment when you accept the thought and and you really like make it uh you know you welcome it and and your brain realizes okay the message has been received so then it kind of like uh fulfill the purpose you know of of alarming us warning us and then it naturally turns off any sort of the safety system and once the system is off, that means that our hyperarousal also goes down. And when there is no hyperarousal, then there is nothing else that stops sleep from happening. And this is how, yeah, this is why basically working with thoughts, emotions uh, in a way that we don't uh, try to get rid of them or escape them or prevent them, but rather just welcome them, let them be hurt. And this is the way how you can actually make them go away. But <laughs> right. <laughs> very, very, very uh, counterintuitive approach, but this is how it works, how our brain works. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. And uh, the only thing to add there is just kind of like if we if we go back and just contextualize this is like, uh, you know, these are perfect examples of those thoughts like, hey, you're not sleeping, you need to sleep, your health will be damaged, etc. Those are the signals. And uh, exactly like you said, Ali, totally agree. Like when we when we listen to this, no, there's no reason for them. And you said it so well, their purpose has been fulfilled and therefore there's no need for yes. them. And one thing about <laughs> those thoughts is that um, since it's the product of anxious brain and it's automatic thing that we don't need to trust them all the time, they can be false. So basically don't trust everything you think. <laughs> exactly. Anything, no matter how uh, scary that thought is, when it's uh, from the place of, you know, when you are in that panic mode and thoughts are keep coming to you, but you know that you're safe. Like uh, literally when you are awake, it cannot harm you. That's the thing. That's the truth. But just your brain uh, 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 tries to warn you and it makes it look like you're, you're in danger. So that it might feel like you're in danger, but in reality you are. And this is what the, uh, or what what is called perceived threat? It's it's not real. It's just how you perceive yeah. it. It's exactly. So threat, perceived threat, hundred yeah. percent. Well said. Okay, uh, I have nothing more to add to that. And so let us jump to number two here. And uh, there may be like some overlap, of course. Maybe we won't need to go into detail on all of them. But um, let's let's check this one. Now, number two from Richa was even if we make breakthrough a friend, uh, um. I don't know, since I'm reading a book at 2 a.m., this will make me nervous earlier. Um, oh, okay, so I, I guess the question here, if, if we summarize it, is this uh, a little concern from Richa that, you know, I say that if you befriend wakefulness, things will get easier, but Richa finds that when she decides to read a book, it kind of doesn't feel natural. She becomes even more nervous, et cetera. Uh, what, what are your response to this? What do you think when you hear this? Well, since like sleep cannot be controlled, so no one can fall asleep on a command. And that means that uh, if like, you know, wakefulness 
cannot make you fall asleep obviously right because you are not uh you know you're you're active you're you're aware uh but what uh make what kind of like helps or or mm, uh, makes it easier for sleep to happen is the absence of hyper arousal, absence of any sort of effort. So whenever we uh, we are, stop fearing wakefulness, because insomnia basically is fear of of not sleeping. And once we perceive that time when we are awake, not as something that is like highly undesired or highly you know dangerous, when we feel feel it's like it's a, it's just time, like extra time that you can spend on yourself, reading or doing whatever you want then your hyper arousal decreases and once it decreases then then basically there is nothing that stops sleep so this is how it works like so the, the thing is here is that not the wakefulness is supposed to make you fall asleep which is like you know the, but it's more like not fearing being awake because then all your you know any sort of safety or, or like guardians that your brain puts out there that they are not reacting anyhow on the threat because it's no longer a threat it's, it's just like, you know, you turn enemy into a friend. That's how you stop reacting to it. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I agree totally, of course. And I just want to add like maybe two things here. One is uh, when I hear something like this, like Richie says, like, what if it's 2 a.m. and this happens, then my my, my standard kind of like, uh, what do you call it, rhetorical question is always like, how do you know it's 2 a.m.? And that, <laughs> of course, makes you think, well, I, ch I must have, ch she must have checked what time it is. And it can often help to not know what time it is. Just a little yeah. thing there. It can really help. Um, and but the second thing was like when I say sometimes when I say or teach something like this that you can just like if you're awake at night you can just like read a book or even watch some Netflix or whatever it is. Then a, a, a very common kind of uh, concern that pops up very naturally is like, won't that make me even more awake? And and my response to that one is that well, see, you found something really really important here. This your reaction here just proves that you are afraid of being awake. And so, you know, we can turn that into exactly. an insight that would be really helpful, right? Exactly. Cool. So, uh, yeah, let's let's jump on to the next one. Number three yeah. from Richa is, uh, oh, yeah, this is a good one, too. Very important question, I think. I meet so many people daily, and I don't even know a single person suffering from this. Does this mean that I'm somehow mentally sick? Why are these thoughts coming to my mind? Do I have some kind of destructive mind? Uh, who's thinking about this 90% of the time, even if I don't want to, that's sort of the question there. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a very important question here again, but yeah, I'll let you go first again, Alina. What do you think when you hear this? Well, first of all, since insomnia is kind of like a very, um, not many people know about this topic and there is like very little we know about it. So naturally people when experience this kind of problems, and whenever they try to kind of ask someone or research something, they never find exactly what it kind of, you know, that perfectly describes their situation. So very often they feel like misunderstood or like no one else is experiencing that because even the close, like, you know, relatives, friends, whenever you tell them they're like, okay, I, I, I'm struggling with sleep so much. And then they start telling you, oh, come on. It's just like, just drink some tea or whatever. So, and, and then you, you deep inside, you know, that it's not going to help you. And it can create a lot of like, you know, like not fear, but maybe like sadness, uh, loneliness, isolation, you know, feeling of being isolated. And of course uh, it's, it's really important to kind of, you know, always helps when you find someone who also goes through the same struggle so you understand that there is you know there is nothing uh, wrong with you and you are not the only person who has that in fact many people since since they are not sharing it that that doesn't mean that people you know around you don't have it they just don't they just don't talk about it and uh, the second thing about this like whether it's uh, mental illness in fact it actually shows that your your brain works perfectly fine when you have fear i mean like th that's the thing like whenever you are um fearing something that means that your brain uh launches like safety uh reactions trying to keep you safe so that the actual the thing that you can you know um that your brain uh, tries to protect you that is like normal because you, normally you would want uh you know uh, you want your brain to to keep you like safe because this is how we basically survived you know the whole species like survived because we were always hyper vigilant to all potential threats and sometimes those threats were false sometimes they were right and this is how like we could make um 
uh, we could uh, basically yeah like survive and escape some danger and uh, it it's not really some sort of like um, it, it's not it doesn't mean that something is broken with you it's just that you learn you taught your brain to fear wakefulness the same way how some people are afraid of let's say uh, dogs for example there are some phobias for if if a person got be beaten by a dog and then they start creating a lot of fear around dogs or like uh, fear of heights or fear of panic attacks there are so many like this kind of fears and insomnia is just one of those fear but it doesn't say that you are you are you know there's something uh, mentally wrong with you or something in fact it it isn't it's just you know uh, how our brain is built our brain is just uh, wants to keep us safe and that's how it does not always like um, with with perceived threats it's not it's not usually helpful the way how our brain tries to keep us safe but uh, since we know like there are so many cases when you know uh, any phobias are perfectly well treated people get rid of any kind of like fears it's perfectly workable and, and insomnia is one of those fears and it's also possible to work on it and make it uh like and neutralize it basically to quit insomnia by working with your fears so uh it is nothing insomnia is nothing irreversible nothing uh doesn't mean that something is like broken inside of you because in fact sleep cannot be broken you there is no way that this can happen it's physically impossible so i don't i think in in this regard uh, there's nothing to worry about 100 and i mean you already said it but again like many people don't really talk about the trouble sleeping so it can seem like it's much more rare or strange than it really is in fact so many people have trouble here so i wanted to point that one out in one more thing and by the way colin I saw your question. We'll, we'll get to it in a second here. But um, I just want to share something, which is, you know, why is it that when we're having some type of like struggle, like with insomnia or many, many other things in our life, we don't really like to talk about it. Well, I think of it basically as like we humans, we're this like flock animal. We like thrive in, in a group. Like that's where we feel, we feel safe when we're in a herd or a group like that. And when there's something happening in our lives, maybe I lost a job, maybe, you know, I, I, I had some uh, other problem. I don't like to talk about it, you know, because then I'll feel a bit different or outside. And when we feel like outside of that big group, we feel vulnerable and we don't feel safe, right? And yeah. so my, where this is leading to is something I thought about a lot lately, which is simply that when you do what you do now, Richa, you, you sent us this message and you're saying, you're sharing what's happening. That is actually courage. Like it's, it's, it's like to say I'm scared, is that shows a lot of courage. Like, you know, you're willing to share this. And so I think that's really, really cool because courage ultimately is what will lead you to a place where you sleep well. So kind of my thinking here is like, it, it, it has, takes a lot of courage to say I'm scared, uh, which can be helpful to know. But what, what are your thoughts on this one, Alina? I absolutely agree with you. It, like, in fact, yeah, when we are facing our fears, it takes courage. It takes a lot of, uh, you know, resilience and uh, being there no matter, like being there for yourself no matter what. So it's it's a hard work, of course. And uh, yeah, the fact that people are sharing, the fact that people are, you know, sending all those questions and then other people see that they just simply by reading someone else's message can be so therapeutic because, you know, people will say, okay, this is exactly what I'm struggling with. So I'm not alone. So they feel kind of more normal, I would say, and and actually, funny enough, the, the more normal you feel, the less anxious, the less you know hyper aroused you become, and this actually results in, yeah, like you there is, you have perfect uh, conditions for sleep to happen. You don't have any hyper arousal, you feel normal. Hundred percent. That's, that's really helpful. Yeah, I just you know um, our our good friend and, and colleague coach Michelle, she uses that word all the time. This is normal. This is normal. This is normal. And yeah. it's I, it's so so helpful to do that. Let's, let's look at this. We got a live question here, which is a really good one, I think. Um, well, all questions are good, of course, but I, I'm, I'm really excited about answering this one. A quick question. Should I wait until I'm sleepy before going to bed, or is this a bad idea? Is it kind of a sleep effort staying up to wait for sleepiness? Um, I, I, I really like this question because it, it's, it's, it's always fun when you answer in a sort of like, a, a, you know, what do you call it? A little... It, you know, it's a little counter. It's a, it's a tricky one. Let's put it this way. So yeah, my yeah. thing, I can go first on this one. My thinking here is, generally speaking, 
it's it can be sort of like a pretty helpful like little tip if like it, for for some people like just like oh when should I sleep well just sleep when you feel sleepy it sounds pretty logical and innocent like that and, and and sometimes it makes sense somebody has been like let's say going to bed like super early and like I gotta sleep then like okay I, I feel a little sleepy now maybe it's time to sleep it, it makes total sense but the tricky thing with it is that again it can become this sort of effort just like Colin alludes to that when you're like aha. Uh -huh, I have to go to bed when I feel really sleepy. So I'm going to wait for that moment. And then you kind of like you're in the evenings, like I'm asleep. Yeah. Do I feel sleepy? Not really. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I felt sleepy, but am I sleepy enough? Yes. I think I'm sleepy enough. This is it. I'm going to go. Like you see how waiting for that perfect moment to go to bed when you're really like your sleepiness has hit that exact level where that, that is problematic for sure. So um, my, my response here, Colin would be something like, First of all, it doesn't matter when you go to bed or not, in my humble opinion. Like some people go to bed like super early because they like to watch a whole episode of, you know, The Sopranos or whatever, like two episodes, like that can be super nice. Or some people like to go to bed kind of like pretty late because they, they, they like that. So when you go to bed, doesn't matter. And I want to say like when you, a lot of question becomes like, so when do I kind of like turn off the lights and, and close my eyes and, 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 and do that? Like, to me, it's more of like kind of when you feel like it. It's like you don't need to feel sleepy or need to feel anything particular. When it feels right to do that, you do that. And something like that. But what are your thoughts on this only? Yeah, I 100% agree. Is It is tricky. And then listen to your body when you are, you feel like you're ready. It might come with this kind of feeling of you're just, you know, when you're winding down, it's just like generally you're like, you know, you don't feel like doing anything particular or your body feels a little bit like, you know, heavy and so on. It's not, it doesn't need to be per, like specifically that state when you're like, you know, you're, you're dozing off like on, as you walk or something like this. It doesn't have to be like that. It's just, it's just the general like pleasantness and just, yeah, like desire just to lie down and, and, and lie down without any expectations. That's the thing. Because when you go to bed with, with an expectation, okay, I'm sleepy, that means that I can sleep or I can fall asleep right now. And this kind of expectation will play a joke or like a trick with you. So so that's that's kind of like also be mindful of that. Like, you know, just going to bed because your body feels like it's ready and and having no expectations because you know we cannot control like no one can fall asleep whenever they like wish. So is it's sleep something that I usually say that sleep is not something that we do, but something that happens to us. Yeah, 100%. so it's passive. Okay. <laughs> um, Pradeep says, uh, "Hi, your logic is correct. It really helps us overcome the sleep effort and fear of wake." Thanks so much, Pradeep, for sharing this. Thanks for all the support. All right, that was a little break, for, uh, kind of in between here from some questions from Risha. Number four from Risha is: In one of your lectures, you told us we need to delegate sleep. But earlier, we never used to even think about delegation. We were so confident that we never thought about it and we were sleeping perfectly. Don't you think the responsibility of it, don't you think it's the responsibility of the mind and body to like take care of sleep? Then why are our brains confused with the error and these safety signals? Don't you think it should just take care of itself automatically? Such a, a, a you know interesting question because it, it has like so much insight and then there's some some parts that are like confused in itself. Mm -hmm. but, uh, let's let's start with this like okay the question of like Daniel you say that we should just kind of just delegate sleep but but before when I slept well I didn't even think about delegation like why do I have to do that now <laughs> what do you think of that one yeah I I think I I think Richard is absolutely right when it says that you know uh sleep something happens that when you don't think about it when you are not doing anything about it when you are like not expecting it not doing any preparations and that's absolutely true that's how it happens and in fact this is our the desired state to come back to that place when you when you don't, no longer need any sort of like um you know any sort of approach you know or anything well basically yeah what we want to uh, achieve here is to unlearn fear and or 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 you know un, unlearn that uh hyper arousal like hyper arousal response so uh it's i i totally agree and i don't think that there is some sort of contradiction because in a way that um when the thing is that sleep cannot be controlled that's what uh, like we said earlier and whenever we start uh kind of 
delegating it to something ex external, so we are kind of relying on something external, that is usually not really the best idea because then it's like always conditioned. Okay, if I do this, then sleep will happen. Or if I don't do this, that's that's when, you know, sleep will, will come. So, and in reality, there is nothing else. There is nothing out there that can make us sleep. It's only our body that, that, uh, that do that fun function. So it's not, it's not about a thought. It's not about an action. It's not about any pill or, or supplement or anything. So in this case, uh, the only thing that what we need to, uh, kind of like rely on is our body's ability like that at whenever, you know, like when you're our body and our brain thinks that we are safe, that's when it will, you know, naturally follow the sleep drive. Otherwise yes. when your body feels like not safe. That's logically that it will be super vigilant and, and yeah, sleep will, will not happen that easy. So <laughs> I think, yeah, I mean. Uh, the only thing I'll, I'll add here is just that there, there can be, there, you're right, there is no actually contradiction, but there, there there's kind of an, there can be an appearance of a contradiction, or maybe we can say there's kind of like what I learned from Sasha Stevens, this paradoxical tightrope thing, whereby it is true that um, to sleep well, we don't need anything, right? We don't need anything. So why do I have a YouTube channel and write books and things like that? When they, like it, it can seem paradoxical, but sometimes it's, the way I think of it is like, Sometimes when you're kind of in this situation where you have the struggle, you kind of need to learn a little bit so that you you don't have to learn anything. Like you have to do okay. a little work to do no work. You have to put yeah. in a little effort to have no effort. Something like that is kind of my, my take on this. Exactly. One. Uh, because, you know, our brain is uh, fearing unknown. So and, and insomnia at the beginning, it's something it's like unknown territory. And of course, naturally, when we don't know what we are dealing with, we don't know what kind of like possible threats this situation can bring our brain will be all about you know keeping us you know safe and once we learn about it and we see it in we see that there is actually nothing nothing there that can actually harm us nothing uh, nothing unknown no no mystery there then it automatically like stops triggering because it understands that there's no there's no uh, danger that's why learning is needed <laughs> exactly <laughs> We have a live question here. Oh my gosh, this, this question could be its own like one hour discussion. Like, hi Daniel, it would be great if you could start a series of anxiety solutions and tips to overcome the same. The same logic applies for sleep issues as well. Pradeep, I think you're like, you know, I'm, I, I agree with you 1000% that it is, it all comes from the same place. And now interestingly, like you, um, Alina, myself, other in the coach section, we've had this discussion of like, how do you approach this when a client has like, you know, sort of like you can say they have both insomnia and anxiety, or you can say it's the same thing. Like, but I guess to answer you, Pradeep, is like at some point I would I would love to do that. Uh, you know, talk more about like that. But on the flip side, it's like I'm doing that all the time too. But anyway, yeah, there may very well be an uh, an, an anxiety playlist or something like that coming up. Um, but anyway, very interesting. Uh, Michael says, letting go of thoughts is work and it takes practice. Yeah, it's, it's again, yeah. kind of like to answer Rika's, Rika's question, it's, uh, it, it is work and practice to arrive at a place where there is no work in practice, so to speak. Fact, yeah, letting go is the hardest task, I would say, that you, we have to learn. I mean, know how to, you know, how to actually per, like make it uh, in practice. Let it, it's not, our brain is wired to not, not let go of control. Yeah we are trying to like move the rocks here. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Let's go. Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, before we look at number five from reach out, I think we should stay on this one too, which was Richa said, you know, I used to have so much confidence. I just slept. What is, what is your response to that one? Well, um, the, well, the way how I think about the whole confidence thing is that, uh, it is true, like when you are, you know, when you don't, ha when you never had sleep troubles like insomnia, then you basically uh, have this idea that that sleep is like, you know, it always happens. So you don't have any doubts about it, even if you occasionally have uh, some sort of sleeplessness due to, I don't know, like it's too noisy, it's too hot, or you were like too anxious about something and so on. So anything can disrupt sleep, but there was n never this kind of uh, patterns when you, uh, the, the, the anxiety, the hyper arousal was, was keeping you awake. And, um, yeah, so I think that, 
maybe yeah, maybe confidence, one more question. Yes, I was like I, I lost I lost the thought, but basically, yeah, that that was uh, what I wanted to, to say. Um, yeah, 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 and, and like you know, to spin off what you said, uh, Ali is like, <laughs> I, I think with this way that there is co confidence can mean. Yeah, two confidence. yeah sorry, I, I was like I started explaining and then I forgot, but yeah, confidence, and um, they think that confidence comes. Uh, with um uh you know that you're confident that you will fall asleep no matter what but in reality this sleep confidence it can be tricky because then it means that you are expecting it to come which implies that sleep is controllable but in reality it is not you know in in our control but what the true confidence of people who have uh, um you know who sleep with no problems is that they know that they will they will be okay no matter what no matter how much they sleep even if sleeplessness will happen it will not really affect them you know it will not do anything you know in uh so they're, they're confident of of being okay with with sleeplessness or being uh okay with any sort of night that can that can happen so yeah that's 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 kind of confidence uh, we are also aiming to reach so yeah y yes and, and also yeah you said it a little differently but you know i would say that there is this confidence that there's nothing wrong with you like there's there's um confidence that i'm not damaged i'm that nothing is wrong with me that type of confidence often you you, you could argue that or maybe maybe even not but I, I don't know like to me the point is like or one point is that if you ask somebody who sleeps well like how confident are you that you're going to sleep tonight mm -hmm. it almost doesn't make sense they're going to be like I, I don't what are you talking about like i don't know it's like there is no confidence in that regard. And so yeah. the tricky thing becomes when somebody thinks that, oh, that person is a confidence. They like, they know they can sleep. I got to have that confidence. And then, yeah. then we have some trouble, right? Exactly. Yes. <laughs> okay. So we, we answered all but one question from um, Richa here. You told us, don't look for the outcome. Just enjoy wakefulness and sleep will happen. Does this really happen? Do you have clients who ultimately were healed with the wakefulness? Thanks, coach. I'm sorry uh, so much. Not at all. We're happy with all the questions. And uh, I think, I mean, th this is kind of like, I don't have so much to add here, but to say that Coach Alina is a great example of someone who had, <laughs> had a lot of trouble and now don't have any trouble whatsoever uh, or yeah. don't struggle whatsoever, right? So um, I will just say that, yes, the, I think the teaching is very sound and it's nothing new, really. It's kind of like, like I know you read a lot about stoicism and all kinds of things, Ali, and it's it's the same teaching everywhere, right? Exactly. You just apply it in the <laughs> right moments. So yeah. All right. Let's see here. Live we have from Jakey. How do you how do you convince yourself that you're confident nothing is wrong with you when you continuously aren't able to sleep? Yeah, that's a, that's a tricky question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what what do you think, Ali? Uh. Well, I think you cannot, you know, uh, you can understand that on certain level, on the rational level, this, but when it comes to our automatic, you know, this uh, um, emotional brain, this, the limbic system, it's, um, it's really, you know, I would say you cannot really persuade it in the moment. You cannot rightly tell it, okay, stop fearing it, you know, befriend wakefulness, uh, um, gain confidence or anything, you know, like this. You cannot do it in the moment because limbic system is not accessible. We cannot really, um, you know, um, uh, manipulate it the way how we, how we work with our rational brain. So the way how that brain, uh, you know, how you teach that uh, emotional brain to stop fearing, stop like, you know, befriending wakefulness and everything is by showing it every time when you have, uh, when you experience, uh, you know, sleep doesn't come or sleep is elusive or you have any anxiety, you show with your, like by showing up every time, uh, being uh, willing to accept any emotions that come. And uh, yeah, basically showing to your brain that, that you are not scared. Uh, oh, that, that, that there's nothing to be scared of. And, um, and, and the thing is like, there, this kind of work involves a lot of awareness. Without it, it's like, if you are not aware of what is happening to you right now, so when, you know, you have, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's uh, nighttime and, and you have some sort of like thought and there is, you, you can just be kind of like in, involved into this thought and, or try to let it go away. 
there is one way, but this way always leads to more struggle. Struggle. So you, when you are not welcoming a thought or you are just kind of like developing the thought, catastrophizing and so on, you are going towards more anxiety. But when you are, when you apply awareness, when you know that, aha, this is this thought is just my brain is trying to warn me here. This is nothing unusual. It happens all the time, like in in any situations where our brain doesn't feel safe. So it's just I just leave it there. And and you you with when you apply a lot of awareness uh, and eventually and not trying to to persuade your brain because you don't really need to persuade your brain you cannot do that this the, in, with this kind of like direct approach but uh, eventually the more you are willing to experience uh, you know hyper arousal wakefulness uh, any sorts of thoughts um, uh, then your brain sees like basically learns by by doing so it sees that you are fine no matter how hard it was but you anyway managed to you know go about your day or or you know your um speed bump eventually ended and you started sleeping more so with this kind of like mm, iterations it learns gradually it doesn't come overnight and uh yeah just be being willing to experience whatever insomnia insomnia brings approach it with awareness and being also like uh, compassionate for yourself towards yourself this is basically how you gradually teach your brain there is no immediate kind of uh, way how you can stop you know or persuade your brain from you know like not stop fearing yeah so absolutely and, and you know um one thing or maybe two things just to add real quick here is that you know uh, you uh, ali you talked a lot about like, these signals and we can we can consider doubt as a, another signal and when we're like, I don't want to have doubt, I want to push that signal away, it creates some more, some more pressure, which is kind of another way of saying that when you make convincing your brain kind of your agenda, like this is what I want, I want to convince my brain that nothing is wrong with you, then it's again, you're not hearing the signal and then there will be some struggle. But when you sort of abandon the idea to convince the brain and just, like you said, be willing to experience whatever happens, then, you know, that's... It, it will happen by itself. Like so many other things, that 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 belief that oh, there is nothing wrong with me, it will it will happen by itself. It's I'll okay. say that way. All right. So let, let's look at um, two questions here from a shorter question. So I think we will still have a good amount of time here. Um, one is from Tom and one is from Ariane. So Tom says, "Hi, Daniel. Thanks so much for responding to my question regarding befriending wakefulness in open class number one hundred and nineteen. You stated that the awful symptoms the days after bad nights of sleep are really due to one's struggle and frustration with the difficult nights. Psychologically grounded, this is. Do you think, however, that symptoms like memory lapses, dramatic mood shifts, and lack of ability to concentrate, as well as changes in blood pressure, etc., could have physical causes due to the effects of inadequate sleep on the nerve networks in the brain, resulting with the symptoms we feel days after poor nights of sleep you know interesting question and i was i was um you know reading this uh, really very briefly as i was preparing for this episode and I, I can just reply to this one first and so to me to me what what i thought when i read this was the the way physical and psychological is presented here i don't think there's anything different between the two i really don't think there's any difference because sometimes we think there's kind of a, a, a divide between like the mind and our thoughts and kind of our bodies but there it's really all it's there's no divide really so the confusing thing can be that when we think like oh our cortisol levels are high that must mean there's something physically wrong in my adrenal gland but in reality you know cortisol is reduced reduced uh, released when we're scared and, and and the fear is an emotion that comes from how we think so how our, how our thoughts like the psychological aspect of our lives is the same as the physical aspect. So I don't think there's any, comp it's really just the same thing here. Psychological is physical, physical is psychological. So I don't, that's that's kind of uh, what, I, um, what I felt. And the conclusion of that becomes like, again, like learning, et cetera, leads to changes that are psychological and physical, whatever you want to call them. That's kind of my thinking here, but what do you think? 
Exactly. I, I totally agree with you that you cannot divide um, mind from body. It's all, you know, when, when you are like, there's, you see some sort of, I don't know, something starts shooting or whatever, then you immediately like the, the thought of it or something by seeing it already changes some, you know, does some body changes, like you become tensed, you are ready to fight. It's like you, the and sometimes maybe you just uh, it was like a false alarm. It's just like some car had this exhaust gas or something like this, and then it was like false alarm, and your body immediately like relaxes. So any changes they are coming like they're happening on your uh, on in in your mind, but also in your body. And the thing is that when when someone has insomnia for you know uh, and they experience a lot of hyper arousal, including physical sensations. Uh, for a prolonged time, it doesn't mean that it changes something in body like permanently, because the moment when hyper arousal goes down, that's when also the physical sensations go like the result, because there is no need in them, like there is no, there is no purpose. They are not serving any any, any other any more more purposes. So they they are going away, and our body is uh, super adaptable. It's. Uh, I I wouldn't say that any change like or any anything that you feel physically is is permanent. It's it's not. If yeah. if it will be permanent, I would still have all sorts of crazy things that I experienced with during my insomnia, but never happens <laughs> anymore. So yeah. very well, well said. I, I hope that helped, Tom. Um, and we'll go to the last question here. And I think, dear philosoph, dear philosoph, uh, if you're there, I think we'll have time for your question as well. But let's read this one. Aaron says, "Hi, Daniel." I've been sleeping well for almost two months, but I had a speed bump the past week. I had very little sleep for nights. I overcame insomnia the first time when I realized I can still function okay the next day, even though I didn't have much sleep. But right now, somehow, I feel like I want more. I, I, I wanted to sleep well, and feeling just okay isn't enough. I started to desire more and more, and I couldn't sleep. I started to become anxious at night just because I think the old way would, won't work. How do you think I can reduce the desire to sleep more? Thanks a lot. Anytime, Aaron. Glad you're here. And, um, you know, it's like a, an open class episode isn't really complete if we don't have a speed bump question. Not to belittle what you're going through, Aaron, in any way, but these are so common. I think it's, it's, it's good to review them uh, a lot. So first of all, I just want to say that from Aaron's question, we can see so much understanding. Like, Aaron understands so well that it's just like, I gotta sleep, I wanna sleep, I have to sleep. That is the reason for the trouble sleeping, including the sleep speed bump. But uh, you know, when you have that understanding in mind, what's your go-to thought here when, when somebody asks you like, I understand that my desire for sleep is what's causing me so much trouble, but how do I reduce the desire? What, what do you think when you hear this? Yeah. I have like really nice uh, um, this kind of like uh, thought because basically insomnia is like a, a vicious cycle, and then uh, it goes like by like if you try to break the cycle, then you are in the cycle basically. So if you want to break the cycle, stop trying to break the cycle. So if you want to decrease desire, stop wanting to to decrease your desire. It's like super paradoxical, but insomnia is a paradox. And the solution to insomnia is also paradoxical. Like, yeah, that's 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 the thing. And uh, maybe a little bit like you know practical uh, um, advice here would be uh, ap apply a lot of awareness because I, I would say Aaron already knows a lot by the way how he, he presented you know the whole like you know the the, the, the whole situation. I could really see that uh like deep understanding of what is happening and now it's just you know looking at this not as the, someone who is being in that play like as a participant but more like as an observer because once you distance yourself from that uh desire craving to control sleep when you distance yourself and you see aha i'm just currently i'm i, I see that i'm craving that desire and I'm, uh, I'm craving that sleep and that kind of desire creates insomnia it can create a lot of like uh, relief because you know what is happening with you there is nothing like um uh, there is not no mysterious thing you know why you're having it and simply being aware of that is very you know very helpful and uh, again, like those two months of uh, good sleep uh, and then having a speed bump, uh, I can totally understand and can totally relate why when you sleep longer, like well, and then you have speed bump, that speed bump usually feels like pretty rough 
because you gained so much kind of like you started feeling like okay yeah i overcame this and i don't need to deal with insomnia anymore and the moment you gain this kind of like confidence uh then it kind of your brain will find a way how you know but how about this thing you know and just like it takes a little small thought or any external event in your life to bring up the the the, the old uh, this kind of like safety mechanism and uh just know knowing that this is a normal part of the journey you will have speed bumps uh so many times and i think it's like i recently like made, made a video on that uh, is that the recovery is not about uh, the time spent on working you know with uh, with your you know behavior thinking patterns or on your hyper arousal it is more about how much you are willing to go through those ups and downs so the more you are willing to experience that the the closer you are towards recovery because when you are not willing to to experience any more hyper arousal or or you are not willing to experience any more speed bump this is like unacceptable for you it will happen it's like self fulfilling prophecy so the more you are willing to have those speed bumps the faster they they will be much shorter less intensive and eventually they will they will stop even coming up because you're like you're totally okay with them there's no need in them then <laughs> so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah 100% I, I, the only thing i'll add to that is that um i i'm starting working on this like speed bump playlist Aaron. so you can check it out it's in the description of any new video and it will just really echo exactly what alina said so i think uh, how are we on time Pretty, pretty close to one hour, but I think we can still answer this the last one, uh, live question. But we need to sleep. It is a necessary part of help, isn't it? Or would you say we don't even need sleep? My thinking when I hear that is that, yeah, you're right. I mean, if sleep wasn't necessary, then, you know, we humans or all mammals, you know, we wouldn't sleep. Yes, it is part of like, it is something we need, of course, 100%. But, um, it, but, but, the thing is that the body cannot, no matter how how it, it seems like my body's out of whack, my brain's out of whack, it's not able to, it, it, you know, create sleep, which I need. It does that. It's still, it still does its job. It always does its job. In fact, like you said, Ali, the fact that you're having some trouble sleeping is in a way proof that the, everything is working as it's supposed to work. When, when we are under some kind of threat or danger, we're supposed to not sleep. That's part of our defense mechanism, safety mechanism. The only thing is that the brain is a little confused. It's a misunderstanding. The brain thinks that being awake is the threat that we have to be, you know, running away from, which is not true. But uh, I want to say that yes, you know, we need sleep. But um, it is the idea that we have lost the ability to sleep, or something's wrong with us that keeps us struggling. But when you see that, even in this, in, in all the struggle I am, like. I, my body's still taking care of me and I get the sleep uh, that, that I need um, considering the circumstances, uh, then I think everything gets easier. But what are you think, thinking when you hear this? Um, I totally agree. And uh, we need sleep as much as we need breathing. And you cannot go without breathing in the same way you cannot go without sleep and your body will eventually, it will give in and it will, is the thing is that our body knows how to compensate for any lack of sleep it always knows how to adjust. We are, we are so super plastic in this way that, uh, yeah, we it would really be good when you well, like we, when we are trusting our body that, that it can do this. And uh, yeah, and, and it's just this idea that sleep is something that we do. That's that's problematic because sleep is not something that we do. We are it's, it happens to us. It's like a function. And sometimes I get a little bit like you know. Um, now when I'm, I'm reading like any articles or anything when they say like healthy about healthy lifestyle and then they name like four things or let's say and then say like exercise eat well uh avoid uh, drinking and smoking and then sleep well but the first three you can control and the fourth one you cannot and that's the pro problematic thing is that they present sleep as something that we do some skill that we can uh, improve or something but in reality we don't have control over that and this is why we have this kind of like a you know um misconception about sleep and which partially contributes to why we are having insomnia because we think like we are supposed to know we are, uh, how to sleep well we are supposed to be able to you know um improve our sleep but in reality it happens to us it's passive it's not something that we do or we can unlearn or learn or improve optimize 100 percent 
Well said. I think, uh, you know, um, we'll conclude there. Thanks so much for coming on, Alina. And uh, for inviting me. <laughs> look forward to, uh, you know, working more with you and uh, having you more on another time. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye.